Hi all, I have a fascinating encounter to show you between Howard Staunton playing white and Anolf Anderson. This was in the London tournament of 1851. E4 from Howard Staunton. We have E5, Knight F3, Knight C6. Giochio Piano territory, C3, Knight F6. D4, Black Took. And now, uh, usually actually C takes in live book is the move we have instead e5 which is another uh, popular move d5 bishop b5 so this variation is is popular even today check like bd2 black castles bishop g4 now and here Staunton gave up his light square bishop to fracture black's pawns and of course he's got that semi-open file to try and make use of to hit these pawns hard later. Queen c2 echoes that, putting pressure on e4 as well. Bishop takes, gets rid of the pressure on e4. And now actually a very ingenious idea in many respects. Adolf Anderson, guess what he plays here if I give you five seconds starting from now. Okay, rook b8, just offering c6 to be able to glide the rook across that nice third rank. Not there particularly, but g6, you get the idea, and try and put pressure on white's king. This is accepted, this gambit, kind of gambit. Rook b6, the queen drops back. And f5 supports that knight a bit stronger. Now, a3, bishop e7, b4, which kind of fixes black's c pawn against any c5 later. Black plays very aggressively now with f4 hemming in this bishop. Knight e1 trying to set up a defense and maybe with knight d3 also if this pawn can be fixed it can be targeted as well. Rook h6 though things are getting a bit ominous over here. With f4 that's shielded now that h6 square so is black whipping up a strong attack. f3 that was one point major point of playing knight e1 to be able to kick this knight at least now knight d3 is this becoming in white's favor with this pressure here the elegant knight e6 though defends f4 and puts pressure on d4 bishop b2 is played queen e8 this looks like a very standard looking attacking maneuver by anderson and also note the knight is not only defending f4 it's defending c7 of course facilitating queen e8 rook a c1 we have queen h5. Black is starting to cool the shots here. Threatening queen takes h2. Now threatening queen takes h3. Knight f2 defends that. One point here is queen takes f3 on the cards. Let's just quickly check this out. There's a refutation actually. So I think both players must have uh, spotted this. Well. At least Anderson spotted this. On queen takes f3, white can actually, can you guess? What does white play? Okay, queen takes g6. And that's winning. Yeah, if black takes here, it's white's just material up anyway. Okay, so that trap isn't gone into. We see uh, rook g3, which now means queen takes f3 is really on the cards without queen takes g6. So just pinning that. There's an unpinning move, king h2. Now rook f5, and this is uh, very dangerous looking, doubling the rooks here on g2. Queen c6 now is played. This was a critical moment actually from a technical point of view. It seems white might be technically significantly better on knight h1 here. I know that's a weird move to play, but if it repels a rook backwards, you can see that after queen c6, we have also rook c2. It gets out of the way for this resourceful defense. White's technically doing very well there in this position. Also, there's the more simple looking rook g1, and here, say queen d1 and queen f1. This looks very defensive on this side of the board, but rook c6 coming. And there might also be rook a6 later. So that's also quite good for white, technically. 
but this lunge here is very risky we have Queen g6 and black is not only defending knight but preparing to treble and after rook g1 rook f g5 this is already very difficult to defend g2 knight g4 is is tried with a tactical idea as well after h5 which is knight f6 check but one moment before we just go into this if you imagine the g pawn was allowed to drop sorry here with king h1 just to show king h1 is not particularly good after rook takes knight g4 as rook takes b2 for example <clears throat> yeah okay so back to the game knight g4 h5 we have this critical moment here why it plays uh, knight f6 check trying to use an interruption tactic on e6 <clears throat> now black has a very important and critical decision to make here if the king goes here then check this position is actually slightly better for white it's not about just that c pawn this a pawn is vulnerable that's slightly better for white uh, on g takes f6 queen takes e6 check this position here if this is reached this position is about equal on king f8 check here is interesting four king it's quite a forcing move four king king and rook so if that's saying queen takes e6 here queen takes d5 this looks scary but uh, white can secure a draw there the move which would be very very good for black is bishop takes f6 just accepting this interruption tactic because off the check this position there's rook takes g2 now if king h1 then rook takes g1 is crushing end of game and if rook takes g2 rook takes g2 the point about this position can you see how black can win this position if i give you five seconds starting from now queen g3 with the threat of mate and if check then there's king h6 and there's no more checks yeah that's that's a really nifty way of winning here um, I think other ways might not work this is a quick check on rook takes b2 no this is actually also good rook g1 queen c2 believe it or not it looks as though there should be checks for white but after rook takes g7 king h6 where's the next check f7 check king takes g7 checks are running out so it seems that that's pretty a critical line where uh, either queen takes queen g3 or rook takes b2 is strong in this position but rook f2 would allow rook g1 and why it's better but in the game we have a very very interesting move which has a significant not too insignificant flaw to it shall we say king f7 was played cleverly it seems protecting the knight on e6 can you spot a slight snag to this move if i give you five seconds starting from now white play okay <laughs> a slight weakness of the last move it blocks the queen from e8 whoops a bit comedic weakness of the last move allowing queen e8 checkmate oh dear anyway anderson actually he ended up winning this tournament as believe it or not but you know he was just human he did blunder on occasion and to be fair how Stolton technically had a good position earlier there were the defensive moves which actually would have made his queen side a bit more uh, promising his queen side uh, winning material if his king was not getting mated um, but uh, yeah 
this was the finish believe it or not quite amusing okay they did blunder these guys sometimes okay comments questions likes appreciated thanks very much